Welcome to Meadowbrook Memories Podcast. I am Jerry, otherwise known as Glister Prince, and my co host is Hitchcock, otherwise known as Alfred Henry. Our mission on this podcast series is to explore the stories behind the magic that was created at Meadowbrook. But over a span of four years, between 1982 and 1986, we saw the transformation of a small educational school with less than 1,200 students, 800 boys, 800 girls and 400 boys into a successful sports and scholastic champion, winning seven major trophies, three Sunlight Cup, two Tapping Cup, one Walker Cup, and one Nutriment Shield. And to crown these achievements, Meadowbrook also produced two Rhodes Scholars, Cabell Creighton in 1987 and Andrea Wright in 1989. Both graduates of Meadowbrook in 1983. In this podcast series, we'll be speaking to persons, both male and female, who were actively involved in this incredible journey, along with friends and staff at Meadowbrook, which inspired the environment which created this golden era. We hope you enjoy our discussion. Please give us as much support and encouragement as you can on whatever social media platform you are listening. Welcome and thanks for joining us. Oh, all right, ready. So remember to like, share, and subscribe these Meadowbrook Memories podcasts so neither you nor your friends will miss another memorable conversation. Thanks. Right, ready, go. Okay. Today is Friday, February 17, 2023. And welcome back to another conversation about Meadowbrook Memories. Me, as usual, Jelly, our Glister, our Lance, our Prince, and any one of those names will do. Joining me today as my co-host for the first time is a girl who I who has the best smile who ever come on Meadowbrook. That million dollar smile as I say, Maureen Spence Yearwood. And yeah. Maureen has been oh. a guest on this conversation. And you can go listen to Maureen Meadowbrook Memories on episode number fifty five, which is actually coming out today, the twenty third. And subscribe to the channel while you're listening to those memories. Our guest today will have to give a proper introduction in true tradition of Meadowbrook Memories. She started in Meadowbrook in 1976 and left in 1979. And although she spent three short years at Meadowbrook, or looked like less than three years, and migrated, Meadowbrook had never really left her. And even as I say all the while, if you only spend one day at Meadowbrook, you will have a memory we will have to talk about. And as I have said in a number of these conversations before, Meadowbrook is like Hotel California, where you can check out any time, but you can never really leave. Uh-huh. Our guest today described herself as one of the quietest students while at Meadowbrook and, was dis- and discovered her love for the creative and travel during her tenure at Meadowbrook, like arts, geography, and Spanish. She participated in the school chorus and was one of the few students who had the honor of being selected by Greg Simmons for the All City Choir and singing at the National Stadium for that famous Fidel Castro visit to Jamaica in 1977. But without further ado, She's here to tell her own story. So, Meadowbrook members, welcome Donna Collins to the conversation. And it's Donna with a one N. Introduce yourself, Donna. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm glad you said the Donna with the one N because throughout my the few years I was at Meadowbrook, um, everyone insisted on spelling with two N's. Um, but how do I introduce myself? Uh, I guess like every every Meadowbrook alumni or every Meadowbrook alum, you know, there's the there's an indelible imprint left on all our lives from the times that we the time that we spent there. Um, it's 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 a little bit um I get a little bit emotional because I, for so long, I've wanted to connect with my fellow Meadowbrook students, and I, I just felt lost out there because it was just so hard to find everyone. Um, the few that I did connect with, you know, we we don't keep in touch as much as as we could, but I am so grateful an honor that you thought enough of me to 
bring me on this platform that I can reconnect by voice and hopefully reconnect on Facebook and then in person. So thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. And um, let's get this show on the road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Maureen, reintroduce yourself, Maureen. Well, the billion dollar smile, as you said. <laughs> uh, this is Maureen Yearwood, 20 year wood, class of 83. And thank you for having me as your co host, Mr. Jelly. And welcome, Donna. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right. Where are you living, Donna? I live in Lithia Springs, Georgia, which is a suburb just outside of Atlanta. It's called, oh, okay. it's, if, you say, if I say Atlanta, you'll know it because it, it's just, you know, that's the closest main city. But we're about 30 okay. minutes. You're, you're in Atlanta to Maureen. No, no, I'm in New York. Oh, New York. Salome. Okay, okay. I want to know why I think yeah. in Atlanta. Okay, okay. No, Salome. Salome is in Salome, Atlanta. Atlanta. Okay, 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 okay. All for right. that name. <laughs> yeah, thank you for the board for coming. And by now, you know, Donna, I don't know how much of this conversation is, but the first question I ask anybody who come on this conversation is, did you choose Meadowbrook or Meadowbrook chose you? Meadowbrook chose me. <laughs> and I'm going to be transparent. I was as angry as could be because I didn't know anything about Meadowbrook. I wanted to go to St. Hugh's with my sister or Queens with my cousin Queens was about a 10 minute, 10, 15 minute walk from my home. I had to, I, I didn't know anything about me. And when I got the word, I was like, what? And for the first year, I refused to learn. But then I woke up in second form and realized that I was hurting only myself. And I decided to get down to brass tracks and and do better. But um, every time we had PTA meeting, my mom, the teachers would say, Donna is a brilliant student. She has the, the potential to do better, but she's a daydreamer. And I was, because I'm an artist at heart. And I've been an artist at heart from even back then. But yeah, Meadowbrook chose me. So you had no idea what Meadowbrook was before at all, Donna? I had no idea. <laughs> no idea. I had to take the bus. I think it was a 35 bus. And yeah. then transfer. 37. 30, yeah. A 37 and then transfer. Uh, uh, what, whichever bus went up Whitehall Avenue and then made that left on Manning's Hill Road. That's that, that 35. Uh, that's a 35, yeah. 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 So where were you living at the time, Donna? What area you were you living? That Queens was five minutes away. Um, it was more like ten minutes. I lived on Lemon Close, which was a it was a dead end road. Um, you know where Hilltop Hilltop Prep School was? Yeah, man, up Manning's Hill Road. Yes, 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 yes. We were in the back gate. Um. Our street was the back gate to mm -hmm. Hilltop. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, all these memories are coming up. Coming back already, yeah. 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 So, um, so I would either walk through Hilltop to take the, to get to Manning's Hill Road or walk around Lawrence Drive yeah, to is, yeah. Whitehall yeah. Avenue to, huh? um, to catch, I think it's the 35th and then get up to you know because sometimes we would meet up with some of our friends on because I went to Swallowfield Primary I was just going to so, ask you that what school, primary school you went to right right. I, I would meet up with my friends like I think it was Sharon Palmer um, she was my closest friend we would meet up walk up um, Whitehall Avenue to Manning's Hill. Sometimes we used to walk to school if we got out, um, if we left out early enough, but otherwise we would 
but we would definitely like the long way home, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is walking home where we could, you know, just hang out and have fun. I think all medical morning, uh, yes. students was like that. Huh? Yeah. I said, I think all medical <laughs> students was like that. <laughs> yes. But yeah. Yes, I was going to ask you, if, yeah, you say you went to solar field all year, yeah. Yeah. And so, quite a few, um, quite a few um, of the Swallowfield alums went to Meadowbrook. You remember some of the so, names then, you know, Donna? Call out some of the names you remember. I don't. If I hear them, I'll probably remember. Um, but I definitely remember Sharon because she was my closest friend. Mm. But we lost touch with each other. And through the years, I've tried to you know, find her. I've asked people who you know, knew her. I think she left Jamaica before I did, the year before I did. You know, say, oh, I spoke to months. somebody today who spoke about Sharon Palmer too. I went and reached out to her, Jackie Garvey. Oh, yeah, Jackie, Jackie Garvey. Garvey. Uh, Jackie uh-huh. Garvey was one of my closest, closest friends. Yeah. She's in Florida. Right now. Yeah. She yeah. Lives, she's in Florida. Touch base a few times. She's one of the people I, I um yeah man. You know, I, I've, I spoke I've to her today, to, but we haven't. Well, for years I didn't speak to her. Then I reached out to her this week. I saw her and spoke to her. She called me and me and her talk and she planned for come on to anyway. So yeah, as I, as, and she talked about Sharon Palmer today to um Donna. So yeah, gosh, she and I were good I, friends. I, she and I were very. She and, she and I, and my brother were good friends. And her sisters. She was remind me today. Say. Oh, we used to come up our yard of a man the road. Gosh, she live uh, with the road, yes. yeah? Yes. So we should have known each other then. Yeah, we probably Constant didn't. Spring. She lived Constant on Spring. Constant Spring Road. Constant Spring. Mm-hmm. Closer Grove. I, I think... remember going to, going to her Sweet 16 party. Yeah. She reminded me, so they said, oh, me and Patrick, that time my brother used to go up our yard, and uh, they mixed my love for it. <laughs> <laughs> Back then, Milo was a big thing. Listen, one Milo, one Milo at that. Too. Yes, yes. With condens, that is yeah. today. To this day, that is still my comfort food. Milo, Milo and Horlick. Milo and Alex. Yes, yes. I remember the Alex. So yes. <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> you go in your bed, you get a glass of that, you cu- a cup of that. That is my glass. That's the sweetest sleep. That's the sweet. Yeah, man. I tell when it go down, just hot enough not, that yeah, it man. doesn't scorch your tongue, and it just go. Yep. And That's... with a piece of bun and, of course. That's how my mother used to spoil me, man. I tell the Jackie, I remember, we used to come up our yard, and our mother makes my life for for me and Patrick. I, I'm a serrati. You remember that Jackie? So I say, yeah. <laughs> Today, today, Donna, today, Jackie called me out of the, not out of the blue, come to reach out to her and she said, boy, a long time, Lance, so yeah, but she will come to her story, but me remember Jackie good, good, because Jackie was up to, with us up to fifth farm. Was the next closest person to yeah, me, yeah, she yeah. and um, Sharon. I was going to ask her about We used to walk I... together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So your first day on the campus now, Donna, when you come to the school, eh, you know I've known about a tag before, what was the first impression you get? Like I said, for a whole year, I was mad. Mm-hmm. I did. I I felt betrayed. I don't know why. Um, I I don't know. Um, and then on top of it, um, it it I had to go. So I I didn't know. I didn't know anyone because I didn't. It wasn't later until later that I, you know, I connected with Jackie and because Jackie was in a different grade than I. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I just I that's the memories are coming back to mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. slowly as we you know as we talk. But I just knew that I was very upset because mm-hmm. I wanted to be near to my sister. And, and sister was older than your Donna a year and six months older than me. She went to St. Hughes. St. Hughes, okay. Mm. And I think, I think, I don't remember when Mr. Dean came to the school, if it was the same year, but Mr. Dean was my neighbor. Yeah, Jackie talked about him today. So Mr. Dean should carry him to school. <sighs> you remember that, Donna? He, he had a VW. Was, I, yeah, I don't remember it. <laughs>
the um I don't remember going to school with him. I just remember not being wanting to be anywhere he was. And then I had him for economics. I was like, can my life get any more horrible? <laughs> and and I, I speak for those who Meadowbrook shows you. Yeah, I know the first year it may not have been the best, but mm. you know, as you got to know everyone and connect with everyone, it got better. Yeah, and I remember when I had to leave, I was just beginning to feel comfortable when I had to leave. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and that was just like a whole nother my world can turn world upside down. You all get into that because more know what it happened this because Jamaicans have a way. When them I tell the pick them tell them I go far and them say don't tell nobody and the next day you know say they're on a plane so regular thing that still happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Donna, so um, what some of the teachers you remember when you just come at book in the first term? Well, of um, I think Miss Foster from math. I don't remember. Uh, all that died the that day. Huh? There's a teacher that died the other day about eight months ago. It wasn't her. Well, Wear glasses. It's not Mrs. Lidla you're talking no, about. No, Mrs. Foster Mr. didn't wear glasses. Was, um, After... Mrs. Lidla was the literature. Mrs. Lidla came later, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she came later, yeah. Mm. I remember Miss Barber for biology mm-hmm. because I absolutely yeah, loved it. I don't remember yeah. the first year. And I remember Miss Drummond for English. Mm-hmm. Of course, Mr. Dean for economics. I think he was, he may have been second year or third year. Yeah. Um, yeah Miss Drummond taught me to. She became Mrs. Brown. Of, what's she? No. A different teacher, Miss Drummond. She was Brown to. Drummond. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I knew her as, yeah. Oh, yeah. Miss Brown, and then she married Miss Drummond. Yes, I you're loved right. I loved English. I mm-hmm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, so anybody else remember Donna? Another teachers? Who was the principal at the time you came there, Mister Top? Donna. Teachers, let me remember Donna. Sorry, you were speaking. I didn't realize that. You were put up. I know. I was. Oh, I was on. I was on a rant. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Let's, if you remember, let's go back to the rant. I will edit it out and bring it up. No worry. Yeah. I I remember Mr. Dean. He lived down the street from me. Um, maybe five or six houses from me on Lemon Close. Um, and I thought, like, could my life get any worse? And 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 I felt like he expected more of me because he knew me. My sis, his baby sister, and my sister were best friends and went to St. Hughes together. Um, but the other teachers, let me who I remember. Um, I remember Miss Foster. Miss who? I remember. Foster. Miss Foster. She, I, I, I had her from math, I believe. Um, I remember Miss Campbell. I don't remember if I had her for both geography and history, but Miss Barber for biology. She was probably one of my favorite teachers. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved biology. I loved history physics was probably my biggest nightmare um i don't remember if it was the brown or mr I, it was mr here that i had physics um uh, mr gordon mr gordon i don't remember a mr gordon 
don't remember. I remember Mr. Hare. He was like, because he was the one Caucasian there, and he, he was kind of a hippie type of fool. And I, I, and I had a, my alter ego probably would have been a, a, a black hippie or something like that. As I was very much, a, um, very much, very passionate about the art, but I had to kind of keep it on the low. You know how a lot of times there's certain things that you love, but you know, there's certain expectations. Mm -hmm. that, I think that's one of the reasons why I was so quiet because I wanted to be, I, in, inside of me, there was this free, um, creative person, but we had to be being raised in a Jamaican Christian family and then going to a Christian school. There's certain things that were expected, but, um, and that's one of the reasons why I love the arts because there was just a certain freedom to being creative, but I didn't know how to release that and until I got to be a part of a, I remember taking part in doing drama and I think there in was auditorium. a class, I, I think, mm -hmm. I don't remember. Yes, yes, yes. And I remember when Spanish, um, in the Spanish class, we had to do, we had to do some kind of um, acting thing and, and, and learn. What was that song that we learned? Um, oh, I can't remember what it is. And that was one of the first chants that I got to to express myself, to really feel creative, to, to creatively express myself. Uh, it's gonna come back to me before the before the, the call is done. And then, of course, um, geography and history. I, I, there was a period where I said I want to be an air hostess because then I could travel to all the places in the world. <laughs> My mom also talk about all the, the different languages. So I did. I think that was where that that rather creative person was starting to find her uh, freedom. And I tell you, when I went to the United States, the foundation that I got in all my subjects in and Spanish. I excelled in Spanish in the United States. I, I, I was three grades ahead of my classmates when I got here. So that's that but if I can share that that the academic foundation that I got in Meadowbrook really um really helped me to excel when I came here. So you were ahead of your classmates when you were here, when you came to the space? Oh, yes. I was, I, I end up in, in advanced algebra, in advanced math, in advanced Spanish. Um, even when, in, when I got to college, I was wow. way ahead. I got, yeah, I, I was an honor student. Whereas in Meadowbrook, I was in, in the, like I said, when I first started school, I was in the bottom, the bottom two. <laughs> but when I got <laughs> here, I was, I was an honor okay. student. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, you had pushed and, yourself. And college. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Maureen. You hear that? Yeah, I heard. No, I was, I was going to say to Donna, if she had pushed herself from first from, you never know where you'd have ended up. Oh, absolutely. This is, it will say that Donna is, Donna has the potential to do better, but she's a daydreamer because I just chose to dream. I was like, in my first year, I, when I said I refused, I was so angry. 
I refused. I was like, I said, if I failed, they would let me transfer to St. Hughes and be with my sister. But it didn't work. It didn't work. Absolutely did not work. But I, I, I chose, I started to apply myself. But mm. by then it was, you know, it was a little bit slower. But I think, you know. Let, let me ask you a question, it, Donna. I before. realized I was only hurting myself. Mm -hmm. Your name is spelled with one N. Was that a typo on your birth That's certificate correct. or why your name was spelled with one N? I'm curious. My grandfather is Cuban. Oh, I didn't know that. And yet. Donna is is um, translated, um, it's Latin for lady. Mm. And um, oh. I don't remember what, what, um, what other language, but it also means gifted one. Okay. I'm glad I asked. I didn't know. So that's how it's spelled in Spanish? D-O-N-A? Yeah. Some say Dona. That's what I was just going to say. Dona. Um, <laughs> I remember for a couple of, like it says for Dona and Bispachem. Um, Dona is, Donna is Latin for lady, like Don. Don is for gentleman, like a Don Juan is a gentleman, and a Don Donna is a lady. Lady, okay. Like lady and gentleman, Donna and Don. Mm -hmm. so, so, so it was not mix up then, like some some farmer present that year, for, at a birth for a period. Because when I hear the, the name of a, of a lot of people have birth certificate problems, so that wasn't the case at all. No. no. Okay. I just want to make sure. Cause some... But if it, if it was a mistake, it was a, it was a divine mistake. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, and I've met a few, a few other Don, Donna with one in... But my grandfather was Cuban. Yeah. Um, and I am from Latin descent. Mm -hmm. When I when we look into the family history, Irish. Well, you know how mixed up we Jamaicans are anyway. Yeah. Our blood is out of, very mixed. Out of many one, as they say. Out of many one. So let me ask you a question, Donna. When you, you came to Middlebrook, I know I say never like it. And you, you didn't like the school. That? But what? Yeah, go and ahead. You were saying something, Donna. Sorry. I was, I was saying I was proud of my dream is that motto, out of many and people. Because if you, period where, you know, we have that, that some, there are opportunities. But when most Jamaicans, we get along with, I, I never encountered prejudice, like real outright prejudice until I came, until I came here. And it was a cultural oh. shock for me. Yep. Mm -hmm. We don't know what I that is. I don't know if anyone else. Think. We don't. We really well, don't. I tell people we grew up with a lot of white, Chinese, all nations. Mm -hmm. And we never knew what it yeah. was to be, to be in that environment until we got here. Yeah. yeah. And especially yeah. at Meadowbrook, it never made a difference at all. Everybody was at Meadowbrook. It didn't. Yeah. Because, yeah, everyone. It, it never, I never saw color. I was truly colorblind until I came here. And, <laughs> and I think that's one of the things I'm most naive about. I, and I, I don't think I've really lost that naivete. I still just it it it's a, and that's probably one of the struggles for me because I just see people as people. Yeah, I, but that's how we, as Jamaican, that's how we usually see people. And I think too that even being a part of the group. Yeah, I I run into the same problem. And that. we saw that in 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 Meadowbrook too. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I came here much later than you guys because you guys. Well, I don't know what year you migrated here, Maureen. Ninety-one. Yes, only a little longer than me. You come like me just come. You come at well, not too much like, little later than you. Um, then I come in the seventies. So. <laughs> I'm seventy-nine. Right, I come in two thousand one, so almost ten, ten years apart. <laughs> yeah. That's you know, but when I come here, I was big man. I don't know. As in, you can't hear me on accent or nothing with sound American at all. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. And another one of the things, too, one of the things I encountered, which I could never truly understand, was um, when I came here, and in Meadowbrook, one of the things that I would be, would be teased about was the way that I talk. Because they're like, you come from foreign? No. I was yes. born Proper. here and raised here. Proper. <laughs> I couldn't. They say I don't have an accent. Yeah, my mom said speak the Queen's English. And she was very, very precise about diction. And if you think about it, too, that's one of the things was stressed at Meadowbrook, you know, yeah. about our diction, speaking properly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let, let, me ask, let me ask you a question, Donna. Where you, the first term on Meadowbrook, when you, when you arrive on the campus, were you surprised at where it was located in terms of, like, in the middle of two community under the hills? Were you... What was the impression of the location of the campus? Um, it wasn't... Um, I, I had a cousin who... Um, Nadine Pusey, she went to the school for a brief, for a couple of semesters her mom migrated to the U.S. and she boarded with this other with I, I can't remember the woman's name right now and this was a fairly wealthy woman who lived up in Meadowbrook um, a few blocks from the school so and Nadine is um, she's a year younger than me so we were pretty close and she lived with us for a period um, so I had visited her at the house, at the woman's house, with, but I didn't know that the school was further down the road before you went down to, she was like up at the top of the hill um, going towards Red Hills Road. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't have school. So I was familiar with the neighborhood, but I never knew, I never knew the school. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's that because Meadowbrook is considered one of the wealthier neighborhoods at the time. Mm -hmm. So, but when I said I was angry, <laughs> I, I I can't describe it. I I really put myself at a disadvantage because I was so upset. I just wanted to be close to my sister. Mm -hmm. So when I so I was disappointed. I was familiar with the neighborhood. Um, even though we lived on Lemon Close, which is off Lawrence Lawrence Trap, I thought we were rich. I didn't know we were, you know, not as wealthy as I thought we were. <laughs> we owned our own home. So, you know, um <laughs> where you laugh. Yeah. No, no. I think I think we were rich. <laughs> I, think, I, I, huh? I thought we were all rich too. Yeah. Yeah, until I came here and and I remember and we had a housekeeper, you know, I would when I would get off from, from lunch at Swallowfield, I would walk home. My lunch was on the table waiting for me. When I came home most evenings, my dinner was ready for me. I never had to cook I ha until when I got to Meadowbrook was when I started begging my mom to, you know, to have me learn to cook. I wanted to learn to cook. 
and and it became a thing where my sister and I alternated on weekends, you know, cooking Sunday dinner because Sunday dinner was one of the times where we all sat at the table together and ate as a family. Or we some some Sundays we would go to Hope Garden or a picnic and have dinner there. So, oh, nice. you know, my mom was a single parent because my dad died when I was three years old. But we oh. had a certain life. She she treated us in a way where I thought we were rich. I, I well off well off than I thought we were rich because I I live in Pembrokeal. And we used to eat dinner every Sunday, same way, in the week. And mm-hmm. we had a bell. When dinner was ready, my mother would ring the bell. But you know, the bell became a problem afterwards in Jamaica. I couldn't ring bell for certain things. So. <laughs> <laughs> you die for that. Yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so maybe that's why that tradition went away out of the Prince family, because the bell... But we used to ring the bell when my mother ready for dinner, for come eating, she come out at the gate and come ring the bell. Everybody run. Yes, we must have dinner ready, exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's why I was laughing, that's why I was laughing down and I said, yeah, I thought I was rich too. And as a matter of fact, I still think I'm rich. Not with money, but just in terms of how I look on life, you know? You know? Yes, yes, yes. And you have I, a level of wealth, of emotional and spiritual wealth that is not um you know some some people may even perceive us as arrogant because of the way and jamaicans on a whole uh, can be are often deemed as arrogant because we have that level of confidence with the way we carry ourselves even if we go through some kind of emotional drain or whatever and 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 just going back to meadowbrook i think that's one of the things that we were we there was a there was a level of pride with which we we were that was posited in us you know i i again i regret that i didn't take advantage of it from earlier on but i think that's one of the reasons why i was so upset when i had to leave because i was just finding myself when i had to transfer from from, you know when when I migrated, and then I was thrown in this in this other culture that you know where I I just like what 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 is this, you know school was so different, mm-hmm. you know but um I think there was I really think that there was something deposited in us that um even with Mr Thorpe I was terrified of him. But as I reflect, you know, um, I saw that he, he, the way he carried himself, he carried himself with a, with a dignity. With dignity that, you mm-hmm. know, it's like, there's like an aw- awesome respect for him mm-hmm. because of how he, he carried himself and he exuded such, um, Dignity, I can't put it any other way. Yeah, man, Mr. Tom you know, commanded he respect. He was an amazing, he was an amazing yeah. example. He commanded yes. respect, yes, yes. Yeah, I he had an absolute... yeah, no doubt who was in charge when you see him, man. With him talk, him walk, everything. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With his dogs. Yeah, yeah, he that... always knew when the dog, when he was coming because the dogs were his. Yeah, that's yeah. the dog before him. Yes, I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. So, who are some other? I got my one and yeah. only detention <laughs> from him. <laughs> or some of? Yep. Oh. I heard young Collins. When, what do you call you, Donna? I was like, he knows my name, <laughs> Young Collins. Oh, really? <laughs> so, <laughs> where got the detention oh, for? My last name. Okay, so I said I was one of the shy ones, and um, I just wanted to be accepted. So, was it Sharon? 
Mama. Uh, yeah, I think it was Sharon. Sharon Palmer. Whew. I got in trouble because of her. Because, you know, she had a group that would, would skull class and walk around and whatever. So she she dared me to skip class and um, they were building the new building and ended up hiding in the building and she had me hide in the building and she and her, her posse left me there. I ended up in trouble and they didn't. <laughs> and when I told, when I told Mr. Thorpe what happened, they, they got the tension too, but they but left me out there by it. myself. Yeah. And left me out there by myself. And man, my heart, I don't know how my heart survived when I saw the dogs and then I knew he was nearby and he saw me and all I heard was young Colin <laughs> and I came up and I just peed on myself. I was so scared. He gave me, the, he gave us all the tension and then we had to write out the whole scripture of Romans chapter 8, I think it was. Or the whole book of Romans, if anything. And me, I'm not used to the tension. So I stood there and I meticulously wrote everything word for word. They wrote out and they left me like, must have left me like two hours later. I think I was finished at 6, six like 6 p.m. when when second, when when the second classes were over yeah evening, evening school, school, yeah they were it was almost time for them to 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 let out when i finally finished and i handed it to him and he walked past he walked past the the, the trash bin and just dropped my papers in there <laughs> and kept going and i was like what and i went after him and sh and um it was a Sharon Palmer. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, what's was um, Lorraine? Lorraine was waiting for me because she wasn't gonna leave me, so I could because we always went home together. Lorraine waited for me, and when I went after him, she grabbed me <laughs> and held me back and said, "No, Donna, let's just go home." I cried the whole way home. Because I for like four hours because we got a we got out of school at what time? Two thirty? Yeah, about that time, yeah. Thirty. Six o'clock I was just six thirty I was just finishing. You were just what? Just finishing. I finished writing. Crying. Oh, finished writing okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. But that was my only detention. Cause like I said, I never got in trouble because I was I was invisible as far as I was. Except for those, the, the, my nemesis, mm -hmm. <laughs> go mm -hmm. nameless. Mm -hmm. But I was, I was tortured. <laughs> so you remember any other students we started with Donna, apart from the name they mentioned already? Um, let me see. There's Lorraine. Like stu students I started with at Donna Dixon, Ian Chung, mm. um, Neville Foster, and I think Karen Dietrich. Mm. Dietrich, yeah. Yes, yeah, past recently too. Last year, I think late last year, yeah. And uh, Jillian Lee Fong. Mm -hmm. Is it Jillian Lee Fong? Or Jillian Kennedy and Camille Hamilton. Those are some of the names that I remember. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anthony Swady. Yeah. Janet Vassell. Anthony Swady uh, went back home to Jamaica. He's living in Jamaica now. He was here? He was in Canada with, with Wayne. It's Wayne brother, Wayne Swain. Yeah, brother. Yeah, it's Wayne brother. Him older than Wayne. Yeah, him older than Wayne. 
But I never knew he went to Meadowbrook, you know. We never know Anthony. Anthony, yeah, Tony. We yeah, call him Tony. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, so we go to Canada every year. Mm-hmm. Oh, you got to we up up for Canada, the reunion, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the Meadowbrook in Canada every yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. Dada, Dada, you have to come with us one of the year. Yeah, I uh to Canada or yeah, I know to Canada the one or in, to New York. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I I I'm just so excited. I am tickled pink. Listen, <laughs> Donna, you're talking about being tickled pink when you meet up with everybody. We act as oh, if we are teenagers. <laughs> That's how we act. Big grown ass yeah. people back home. Yeah. Yeah. No, it wasn't Sharon Palmer. I'm I'm called I'm making mistake here. Sharon Palmer was one of the people I would but Sharon Robinson. Sharon was, Robinson, yeah. You used to play netball. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Courtney Strudwick and all those people you were with then? Yes. Yes. And Karen Phipps. Karen Phipps, I remember Karen Phipps. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember it. Yeah, yeah. Constant White. Our Constant was your year, Jelly. Constant was older than me now. Constant was older than me. Oh, she was older than you. Okay. Yeah, Constant was about three, four years older than me, if I remember serving me right. Yeah. Constant was my prefect when I started, When I think when I was in second form. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was one, I can't remember her name, but I think she was Karen something, a, a prefect. Her first name was Karen. It was a Karen Wright? Karen Wright, I think it was. She was tall. That was Andrea Wright. Andrea was tall. Karen was slinky too, but she wasn't as tall as Andrea. But she was just the sweetest. She, 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 she was just, I just idolized her. Um, I think I wish I could see. She left before she. Le- I think she may have graduated in fifth form. Was she in fifth or sixth form? I don't it's not. It's not Andrea right you're talking about though. Um, at cause when you left in seventy nine, it's possible if you leave in seventy nine, maybe she was in um. Um, Karen right I know that's um, Andrea. I want to Karen is older, yeah. Yeah, Karen and I started Middlebrook together in 1974, so yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I think it was Karen. I think she was tall and lanky, and um, she was just so sweet. She was strict, but sweet. I mean, she spoiled me rotten. I just idolized her. She, she relocated to the U.S., and we had kept in touch for a little bit, but I lost... Um, I would love to get a bunch of those um, yearbooks so I could just go through, like from '76, so I could just go through and. Yeah, I was. I was saying. I, I was saying the ones that I have. I was saying the ones that I have done. I was saying the ones that I have. Yeah. Um. So. At what what year you decided say you're going to start start school? Guys, say you look for the first year. Guys, you're so upset. You come out of grade school at Meadowbrook and decide for this it. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, <laughs> I think like coming to the end of second form, um, when I thought we were, when we first heard that we were going to be moving. Um, so I really, the end of second form and in, and all of third form, I just like, I, it's just like I was eating up everything I could because I didn't, because we were supposed to leave in when I was in second form and things were delayed and it ended, we ended up, um, because my mom did not want to leave us. She, she wanted, she didn't want one leaving and two staying or two going and one staying. She wanted us all to travel together. My grandmother refused because there's so many nightmares with um, parents leaving children and, um, you know, children suffering because their parents, you know, 
relocate and say they're going to come. So everything was delayed so that we all could um, could go with my mom at the same time. So the trip was delayed. So I took, at, it's, like, it's like at the end of the second year and at the end of second form into third form, I just was just like, eat, just like grabbing everything I could because I didn't know how much longer I was going to be there. And I realized that I've, that these people were all a part of my life. And I, it's just like, it was just a whole nother level of anger, but I was just holding on to everything. I started participating more and even I think I don't remember it was the first year when we had cheerleaders. I became one of the cheerleaders for sports day and I designed the costume for us. What host what host were you in Donna? Saunders. Of course. That was <laughs> why are y'all laughing? Because we were the best. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it was a Sanders people love to talk about themselves, yes. Yes, right. Don't no, no love on the Sanders man. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I, I was more than I was oh. red. Yeah, I wasn't Rodney, it wasn't yeah. Rodney, um like who was always losing the blue house? No. <laughs> <laughs> you look it you look you look she's not here tonight because she'll take you on about that. Margaret will take you on about that, yes. <laughs> she's a curry she I hear me on her I yes probably I don't have remember. Enough. I don't remember. This is like forty <laughs> something years ago. Mm. I'm surprised at for what I did. <laughs> but yeah. Mm-hmm. Um that year I decided to just um just 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 eat up everything that I could, so because um, I didn't know when we were gonna leave. Yeah, well, let me ask you something about that, Donna. Because two well, first things, you say you're angry. Say you're angry coming to Meadowbrook, and why I leave you angry? Explain that. Yeah, because because <laughs> because I like I said, I was just beginning to find my Meadowbrook. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, because I, I just, I wanted to be near my sister. I wanted to be near my sister because I, I was for, for years, I was just buying for the attention of my sister, my oldest, because I looked up to my big sister mm-hmm. um, and I just wanted to be near her. And that didn't happen. And then, again, I didn't know anything. I knew St. Hughes. I knew Queens. I knew Immaculate. I knew um, Holy Childhood. I think Holy Childhood was my third choice mm-hmm. also. Again, too, because it was near enough to me. And um, I knew someone that went there. Um, Lorraine was the only person, Lorraine Ricketts was the only person I, I can remember from, from, um, Swallowfield. Mm-hmm. I was, I was just close to that, yeah. Her. I was close to her and, and I felt accepted by her. Yeah. So she was my only connection, but then again, and, and I don't, I mean, you know, when we're teenagers, we're stupid. Mm-hmm. We were stupid, and I was stupid. I I was I had a whole lot of self esteem issues. Mm-hmm. And I would but, but I don't I, think that's what it is, you know, Donna. As I um I think a couple of weeks ago when we spoke, I is that some people um, mature faster than some. Mm-hmm. So it just depends on where your level of maturity was at the time. Mm-hmm. And I, because I as was, you said, your your bigger sister, yeah, your bigger sister, you you are trying to em, el, el, oh, said, el, emulate her, emulate her, be accepted, not so much emulate, but be accepted by her. Right, right. So you wanted to please her. 
So you wanted probably to be close where she could see what you're doing. Mm-hmm. But let me ask you, yes. did, did she have a problem? Did, was she upset like you when she migrated to Donna? Um, no, because she she was in her last, she was in fourth form or fifth form. Yeah. She was in fifth form. So she... She she got to, no she she didn't um she was in fourth form so mommy allowed her to go back and finish high school. Okay. I was form. I didn't. I was coming to the end of third form. My brother was in second form at Calabar. So my mom oh. made the decision to send her back so she could do her old levels. Oh, your mother sent her back to Jamaica. Yes. Okay. So we all came up together and she she was just about to do her O levels. So she got to finish. And then and then she was upset because mommy at the day after she after graduation she was on the plane. Wow. So that was like not a dollar a day. <laughs> I mean, no. when she graduated, it was, and your older sister went to St. Hughes, right? After, yes. Yes. And I just found out that she... So all those people that she spent those five years with... Yeah. She bought... She, I just heard because she just connected with a bunch of her um, sisters from St. Hughes. And now every Sunday, they have a call at 3 p.m., Three One. to four, three to five, where they are all together and just, you know, reconnecting and stuff. She's been doing this for about a year now. And um, she, some of them she didn't see after, she, the, like I said, the prom was like the Friday and the Saturday she was on the plane. So she she cried the whole time she was at prom when you know that should have been a day of celebration yeah. and everything. Yeah. She some of them she never saw or heard from again until she she somehow connected with them to do these calls on Sunday. Well, you can boast until her now, Donna. So you find not just a classmate. Oh, I told her. I told her today. Oh yeah. <laughs> I told her. Yeah, I told her about you. So, yeah. Yeah, man. Spread the word, lad. This is really... Let them get jealous of you, man. Let them look unique and different. Say, <laughs> it's not just a class. We connect up back with everybody. And everybody can come give them a story, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm yeah. looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that, Dan. I'm both fun are saying that, yeah. <laughs> Them hear about yeah, because I was feeling kind of jealous. I was like, oh, wow, she's back with all her sisters. And um, she met up with one of her best friends in New York. They went out and spent the day together. And they, she had some trip with, them, with, with a few of the girls and everything. And I'm like, I don't reach. I don't know where to find anybody. And a couple of people, like I said, I reached out. But we haven't had the chance to, you know, to... To connect. Meet up and, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, man. I, I, after, I was, as I'm at Avaka, I'm going to share, um, share you guys know more with each other that you know, connect. Uh, Maureen is the right person to connect you with. I am, believe it or not, Donna, as I said before on these, I was like in witness protection for over 20 odd years. <laughs> like a witness protection today. <laughs> no, I was missing in action. For, missing, missing. What if I years? Life yeah. take over, you're married, you have a, you, you have a commitment, and when I come a foreign, it's like, I don't have time for do nothing else, and other things happen. And it's last year, the side say, you know what? Let me come. But as I say, all the while, and this, I come and think I was going to say about cricket and football alone. And by now, I think I had find enough cricket and football already. But I realize, say, uh, everybody want to tell them story, Donna. Yeah. Take a picture out there. Yeah, man. Everybody, there's a the man. And I said, better take it. You thinking on a story and they attack for over hour now. I would have start talking it. And everybody want to tell them story, man. Everybody have them story, Donna. So you just come on with for three years. I never forget it, you know? You never forget it. 
So let me ask you a question, Donna. What's some of the fun memories you remember at Meadowbrook? During the time when you cuss when you come in and you cuss when you leave. You have fun apart from well that would, give me some of the fun memories that you have. Well, definitely being a part of the chorus. Mm-hmm. Start both that, um, yeah. I I think it was a it was a it was an honor to be selected because the well being a part of chorus being a part of the Spanish club um, with chorus, we, there was a, there was a group of us that was selected from chorus to be a part of the all city school choir. And there were maybe like three, at, at maybe three of us that were selected. So that was like a, a, a big honor so just like a handful was selected from each school from and my brother who went to Calabar, he was one of the few selected from his from Calabar. So to be able to even share that with him was was just awesome. Mm-hmm. And then we would we we were preparing for when um Castro came to Jamaica to sing at the, the national stadium. That was like a big thing. Yeah, that was a big know? thing. That um, was a big thing, Donna. Yeah. So, um, singing in the chorus was, and, and being a part of All City, we would rehearse every Saturday. So, you know, who wants to go to school on Saturday, but to be able to sing with the group and, and do the different things that we did, that was really exciting. Um and I got to do that within the last, like, 77 to the end of 77 to when we left in 79. So it was really, it was a very short time, but it was, you know, so, it was exciting. So you were the only one from Meadowbrook who was a part of that group, Donna? No, no three, it was maybe, said, there were maybe three of us, maybe three, no more than five, because um, there was, it's, it was a very small Choir. I remember the other student. Student. You remember the other students have named Donna? No. No. Oh, they might hear this. I'm, I remind, I'm, I'm text me. I remember I said I'm the part of that. Yeah. So, did you realize the significance of going to front, to sing in front of? Castro. Not Castro, Donna. Uh, th- Not Castro, th- Maureen. Th- Papa Fidel, I want to you. Oh, Papa Fidel. Fidel. But listen. <laughs> This is, this, is one, this is probably going to be a little bit embarrassing, but I was so excited to be a part of that up until the day. I mean, and we rehearsed hard for this, but the day that I, we were supposed to, that Saturday morning I got up, I was so sick, throwing up. And I mean, a hot mess. I still put on my uniform and I was barely dragging myself to the door. And my mom said to me, where are you going? Like she said, where are you going looking like that? It didn't take much convincing. I just turned around and went back to bed. And I bawled and bawled and bawled and bawled and bawled because I wanted so much to be. I never got to go. I never got to do it because I was so sick. So you didn't participate at all in the function, Donna? You trained and didn't participate? I did not. Oh, wow. Devastated. Hello? Devastated. Did your brother go? No. Cause I, and I was talking to him about it today. I couldn't remember if he went or not, but he told me today he didn't go. And apparently he didn't go because mommy wasn't going to let him go without me. Alone. Mm-hmm. That's I probably feel home with you because you were sick, you know? I, when I said I was dog sick. That is a pity. I That's a pity. That was, yeah. I, wanted that, to... I mean, that, that was a historical moment. Yes, I was going to ask you if you had seen Fidel up close. But you can't give me an answer on that, you know? I, I didn't know that. I, I, when you say you're saying, I didn't realize that you didn't get to go at all. Donna. That is a pity. Yeah. That was a piece. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would have been yeah, yeah. It's, it's a historical moment. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah man, I'm, I'm off for three days. Huh? 
I balled for three days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know you can't ball already. You ball from, from Middlebrook to up here yard already. So, no. <laughs> no, when I said, when I said I was so committed to it that I literally dragged myself out of bed, got dressed, and made it to the front door, I was that determined to go. Mm-hmm. 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 I could barely walk. I could barely walk, but my mom like, where are you going? Like looking like that. Where you go? <laughs> well, don't sound like your mother talk like me. Mother talk the Queen's English. Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> your mom, your mom's still alive, Donna. Yes, she lives in Brooklyn, in Crown Heights. Yeah, she does. In yeah. Crown Heights. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's Lincoln so you come to New York? Huh? Yeah, I was there. I was there last week. I was there last week? I, Donna, I tried to get back. Been, up. Huh? That would have been a perfect time for us to meet. Link up. Yep. Are you in Queens? No, she's. A, you're in Queens. Yeah, I'm five minutes from the airport. Five minutes. I could have scooped you up. Which one? LaGuardia or J.A.? Oh, JFK. 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 Okay. Yeah, I was there for, I spent a couple of days with my mom, and um, I was there for a business meeting. How old is, oh, okay. how old is your mom now, Donna? I, I've i lost track, but I think she's about, I think she's about 83. Mm. Okay. Still young and yeah. sprightly. Yeah, that's young, yes, yeah. My mom died about six years ago. She was eight to seven, so it should have been this year, not take right. Yeah, this year. So she should have been nine to three. Yeah, this year. Yeah, she'll be nine to four. Nine, guys, this, I was coming this year, seven years. I was be seven year. years, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember my mom died. Next month is my mom memorial, too. Oh, yeah? Seven years. How old was mm-hmm. your mom, Maureen, when she died? Seventy. When she died, she was 60, 67. Oh, your mom was pretty young still, yeah. Yeah, yeah pretty young. very young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He came for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So any other fun memories, Donna, that you remember, like on a field trip or not like that? The Spanish, the Spanish club, club. Um, like I said, and, and doing those, learning those songs. And who was um, in charge of the Spanish club? Is that Mrs. Nelson? Mrs. Nelson. Mrs. Wasn't she? Nelson. Yeah, man. My favorite, one of my favorite was, teacher, that man. Yes. 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 Lance, look for you. Oh, yeah. So, I tell, her, I tell her the other day when she takes me, say, me say, you are Murder Brooks. Gladys Knight. <laughs> <laughs> I told her that the other day, and she, <laughs> she laughed. I take her and throw her that. And she, <laughs> yeah, man. She still look good, man. Oh, nice. I would love to She's on Facebook, you know, Donna. She's on Facebook. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man, she'll love free talk. Connect us. Connect us. Because I, I, want, I want her to know that she, she, everything she deposited in me allowed me to be an honest student, an honest Spanish. I mean, advanced. I did advanced. Spanish and I was in college. Oh really? That's what oh she was going to be proud of that. I forgot my car know that. I was yes, yes. definitely have to reach out to her tomorrow on the car. Because she had been on this I don't know if you heard Dana, she was on this conversation. She and Miss Barbara came on as a guest, you know. As guest. Uh-huh. You didn't hear that. So I, I'm I no, I didn't hear that one, but I'm gonna go back and listen to take some um, take some time and listen to all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No man, I never hear my own story. Mrs. Nelson could have gotten me busted one day and she never did that at all. She just take out the pen from me, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'd want to do a pen down where, you know the pen them where you turn it upside down and it's a naked girl? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's that what I took in Spanish class. I couldn't learn, I don't know not about Spanish at all. So I had that as my, as my entertainment in <laughs> class. And she took it, she took it away from me. She never sent me to Mr. Tapper or nothing, because I slowly get a cane in. 
Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. That man loves you, that king. Yes. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he spared me, though. He, he had me to write out the whole. Yeah, but never, I don't think he ever cane girls. I do a girl come on and say she got cane in, but it wasn't from Mr. Top. It was from Panama. Yeah, Erta said she, she got cane in. Erta Bogey said she got a cane in. Erta, Erta Bogey. Yeah. Erta Bogey. Mm-hmm. I never know she could have got cane in. I thought, mm-mm. Like, you think she was a saint, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, man, if you listen to fair conversation, you explain to you how she get her cane in, man. Yes. <laughs> I didn't know girls got cane in. When she tell, that was news to me. Probably by Spanaman. Must be Miss yeah, Macklin. It was, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't right name there. It wasn't um, Mr. Top. It was Mr. Top. I don't think Miss Parson did it after. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah. Well, I don't think Hannah did it for our old tenure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think we stopped at a point. So, what was your what was your impression of Miss and um, Donna? Um, I think, like I said um, earlier, that there was a certain there was a certain level of this this we, how we carried we learned to carry ourselves with distinction. Mm. Um. I looked up at most, like, like with <laughs> Mr. Thorpe. There was a, there was a fear, <laughs> a mm. reverential fear, you know, but you, you admire from a distance, but you still fear. Yeah. You, does that make sense? Yeah, man, make a holy percent. Holy percent. So, as I said, Mr. Thorpe, command the respect, man. Command it. It's mm-hmm. like... He had no doubt to know who was in charge completely. He he spoke well. He carried himself well, and but you know the fact that he lived with he 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 had those dogs everywhere he went. You knew there was a level of tenderness about him that because you you can't love animals and and because animals tend to to bring out a, a tender side of you, at mm-hmm. least to, to me. Mm-hmm. But like I said, there, there was that, that um, like you said, the respect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. I didn't really appreciate that until, like I said, I, I, I missed a lot and, and only because of my own but I, 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 I come to appreciate a lot of what I got in the school when I came here because I saw the, the order, the, the, we, we wore uniforms. So we, we ca- and then wearing that uniform, you knew that if anybody saw you in that uniform outside of the school, you had to you represented the school the difference here was we didn't wear a uniform now they're wearing uniform because it's supposedly to, you know bring some kind of order but the way the girls dress the way they carried themselves and and the the the, the um the lack of order, the lack of respect to teachers. I appreciated what I had in Meadowbrook. I really, really came to appreciate it even more when I came here. I appreciated the way the teachers carried themselves and the way they, um, the example that they set for us, the discipline that they, um, they gave us. I appreciated that, and like, and Miss McLennan was one of those. I guess there were those who spoiled us, like Miss um, Barber was one who spoiled us. At least she spoiled me. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes. So, so, and even reflecting now, I learned to appreciate it even more. 
speaking about Miss Barber, were you at that class Miss Barber had that was overflowing? Or you probably had left already? Probably, probably would have left. Miss Barber had a class where she was teaching. She went down to the clinic on Shipe Road and got all the equipment and things for sexually transmitted disease. <laughs> and that's the only class that was full for the <laughs> Yeah. Overflowing. I was not a class, Maureen. I heard the <laughs> I was not at that class. I wasn't privileged to be at that class. <laughs> or lucky, but put it that way, yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let me ask you another question, Donna. And apart from the time Mr. Top gave you lines. What's the most embarrassing moment you remember at Meadowbrook? You can look back on with a smile. Mm. The day that the um sports day. Yeah. My last my last sports day. Um I had designed my own costume and my and my aunt helped me to sew it. I didn't know at the time that the fabric I used was was for lining. You, you use it to make slits and stuff. And somehow, I didn't hear you. I did, I didn't hear you breaking up. I don't. No, know I said my, material started to yeah. fray away it started to open up yes it yeah it tore and um something i used i i didn't get to finish sewing it so i had it pinned and the pin it's just messed up and it ended up ripping out on the side and and i had to be walking i was the baton girl <laughs> and i had to be um Trying to be skillful and when it was a mess, it was a mess. But I can look again. I was. It's my last few days in the school, and I'm trying to pack in every moment of memory that I could. Um, and that was one of the, one of the most embarrassing days. We well, say you had a wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> wall room, wall room, yes, precisely. <laughs> Whoa, um, all I can say, Donna, is a good and, thing. And, yeah, go ahead. And the thing is, the blessings of the Lord hath made me rich. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, when I say rich, endowed. Yes. And <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, Donna. Yes, yes, I hear you. Yeah. Even from then, eh? Even from then. Yes. I, I think that th that they grew before anywhere else on me. So. <laughs> caught up with them. <laughs> right? You finally caught up. <laughs> finally caught up. <laughs> I, I seriously say I grew into them. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you, Donna. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So, let me ask a question. I don't want to, let me ask this question. Which song you remember at Meadowbrook? Which song was fashionable at the time you were playing at Meadowbrook? Or popular on the, the radio? Um, I don't even remember. I it was the music disco, show. disco. It was the era of disco. Yes, the I will survive. Oh. That was a big one. Um, Gloria Gaynor one. Gloria Gaynor, yeah. Yes. Yes. The disco I era. I was actually thinking of a, um, of a reggae song. Um, oh my gosh, that's so long ago. There was a song. Um, whew, it's on the tip of my tongue. It was right on the tip, the of, tip my of my tongue. 
I know this song. Yeah, I know this song. I can bring it up. I remember. <laughs> you remember the song, Maureen? Yes, I can't remember the rest of the world, but I know the song you're talking about, Donna. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was really a reggae song. It was like a local, uh, what I'm call it. Yeah. When I forgot to say, I, I, I can't remember the words. Yeah. Yeah, Donna. Yeah. Because sometimes songs bring back memories of things, you know. That's why I ask you. Mm-hmm. So I ask mm-hmm. that and Donna. Sometimes the song triggers a certain memory. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know, um, and then of course during that time we had birthday parties and stuff. Um, Roba Dog. <laughs> Roba Dog. <laughs> you remember that? Yes, I remember that. <laughs> You know, you used to rent a tile and Yeah, yeah. Say so you say you went to Jackie's Sweet Sixteen Party. Oh of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. So mommy make you go that. Mommy never lock on the down. Because um because Jackie and I were you know, we were we were good friends. Oh no close enough and almost and, even I know we were close enough but also my like I said, I was the shy one, but my, my, and, and my boyfriend at the time, he lived, he and his twin brother lived near to where Jackie was. And my sister, my sister was a social butterfly. So any, whenever she wanted to go somewhere, the only way that she could get to go, mommy would allow her to go as if I was. Okay. So... So your, your so boyfriend and, went to Meadowbrook? No, he went to Casey. Okay, okay. Oh, it was a betrayal. It's an absolute betrayal mm-hmm. to my school, but yeah. Um, but he lived nearby, and that was, and he was my first boyfriend, so that was my opportunity to spend time with him because I was just. You know, just kind of coming out of my shell. Mm-hmm. And we were just starting to see. You're just, you're just a bus out, as I said, Donna. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and, and what's interesting is he came, he came to my sister's sweet 16. And he had been coming to my house. For like a good year before I even, because I was not interested in boys. I was a bookworm. Mm -hmm. And he came to my sweet 60s, which was the year, like, we left in 79, 78, 77, I think it was. And he pursued me for a good year. And it was just before we were like late 78. That I finally, I finally decided to, you know, give him an opportunity. And Jackie's birthday was in January, I think it was, mm-hmm. Jackie's Garvey. So I was just now getting him. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I met him when I was 13. Met so him where? I was When I was 15. Okay. I saw the one on the same one. That's how I met my work there. But of course, I'm, wor- I'm worth the work. <laughs> I hear you. Okay. You're worth the work. And still Donna. am. Huh? Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Maureen. No, I said she was worth the wait. Yeah, that's what she's saying. That's what she's saying. That's what she's saying. I'm worth the wait. I hear no. I hear no. I hear. Mm-hmm. Um, let me ask you another question, Donna. Let me ask you another question. Uh, this is a question I want to bring up. I'll bring up this question, you know. Um, yeah. What do you think? Because since I started doing this program, a lot of people reach out to me, including you, in terms of I want to get back to Meadowbrook. What do you think we can do to inspire people to start giving back to Meadowbrook? Inspire alum for, for start giving back to Meadowbrook. 
Well, you definitely, um, this platform definitely is, is a start, um, you know, giving, creating an awareness, um, bringing everybody back together. Um, and I believe from what I understand, like just here in the U.S., tuition is extremely expensive. And there are a lot of students who um, find it difficult to afford tuition. Mm -hmm. So I believe in, I believe we should create some kind of a foundation or funding source where, you know, even if it's a, a dollar, if, think of all this number of students that have left the school. If each of us give a dollar, what difference that can make? And not everybody, you know, I'm, I know we're going to give more than a dollar, but just thinking, think of what that dollar could do. Think of what your $2, your $5, your $10, your $100 could do. And, and that's you know, something uh, that I... Huh? We do have programs where you can adopt a child. You can sponsor a child, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. Get I mean, involved. Mm -hmm. but just to get involved, um, mm -hmm. find out where the need is and where you can yeah. meet that need. And and I do have, I do have something that I that's been laid on my heart, but I think it's um, before I you know, say more. I just want to put some things in place. I don't want to put it all out there right now, but right. definitely something through through my company. I would like to set up something where we can, you know, create some kind of a legacy. That's 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 great news, Donna. That is great news. Oh. If it's even that alone, you come and say on this podcast, and that is great news for the school and for, you yeah. know, Hmm? Well, that like podcast, as I said, Converse. Forward. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Well, so we are so moving in the right direction. Forward. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The first step to first step to um, making a change is to find out what is needed. Yeah. So finding out where the need is and where you, and how you can meet it, but you know, putting our heads together. I, I am like I'm a late bloomer in a sense of the word. I'm still late coming in. Well late bloomer in school and I'm still late bloom now because I'm coming in so late in the mi in the mix. But um I'm just excited to to have made this connection and honored for the privilege to, you know, to share my voice and share my story. But, you know, finding out more where I can make a difference is it's an absolute honor to do that. Yeah. One thing I can say is that it's never too late. Definitely never oh, no. too late. <laughs> yeah. I mean, G G there's a story about G that Jesus spoke about the the ones that came out to work in the field. And they everybody, the, those who went out first wondered why they didn't get paid more than those who came out in the afternoon but everybody got paid the same so you know I may be late in coming in but whatever my contribution is it's just as, just as equal to what those who are ahead of me definitely mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well like I said Donna you talked about it earlier I said it's worth the wait sometime. So just wait and finally come. Not too late and it's always worth the wait. So yeah. we're getting we're moving Nothing in the right before time. Yeah, go ahead. Nothing before time. Nothing before the time. That is true. That is true. That is so true, Donna. That is so true. Um let me ask you another question now. Um oh, Donna, right? Okay. This is an important question for you ask you because I think this will mean I will it for you. How do you feel 
bringing up back all these Meadowbrook memories after all these years? You know, um, I get a little bit um, emotional because, you know, I, like I said, I deprived myself of so much because I was so upset that I didn't get to go to St. Hughes or whatever, but there's purpose in everything. And you and I had a conversation yesterday mm -hmm. about how God strategically places us. And a lot of times we don't understand, you know, why. Mm -hmm. But seven, six, night when, when Meadowbrook chose me, the purpose for which I was chosen could be fulfilled now or something years later. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. Yep, well, yep. You know, um, so those are the thoughts that are coming up for me. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I don't remember a lot. But the few things that I do remember, the things that are coming up now, it's created a level of excitement and, and curiosity as to, God, what are you up to? What, what, what do you have up your holy sleeve? <laughs> you know, why now, 40-something years later? Why not 20 years ago? Why not 30 years ago? Why now? And I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited um, to that you would think enough of me to even honor me with this opportunity to come on that, you know, that my voice, you know, can make a difference to someone else out there who felt like I did, who was one of the shy, shy students, not popular and invisible in so many ways, because I felt invisible. But, you know, maybe now the invisible back then, they can come forward and feel more confident as though, you know, they can make a difference. Mm -hmm. for, it, for, funny you said that, Dana, because when I started this conversation, as I call it, I didn't like call it podcast, I spoke to Rory McGregor, a good friend of mine from school, and, you know, and he said to me, Mr. Jelly, um, and you know, I was sharing up. I didn't say, man, Jelly, this, you want to bring on people whose story. It's almost like you must say, your stories for the forgotten ones. I'm going to say, yeah, those are the stories I want to hear more than anything else. So, like your story, Donna, as you say, you didn't. It's not like you played this or you played at a school like me and my big mouth. It's like, but your story is important because I want people to hear your story and come out and say, everybody have them story. Yeah. Everybody of them so man. That's it that's that to me more important than than my story. That's why I look on it. You see what I'm saying? My story probably I hear from other people. But I'm saying other stories wouldn't have heard at all unless we have this conversation where we have now. And because we have it now, would you other people are gonna hear it and say, Yeah, but if Banner can't come tell for your story, I have mine too. And this is what I like about these conversations, then. especially the ones, as I said, the forgotten man at work, call them. The forgotten men and women of, of Meadowbrook. And I'm saying they're not forgotten. They won't be forgotten at all. They're not, maybe can't reach everybody, but I reach enough people, people inspired to listen to it and say, yeah. You know, but these ones, I, I, yeah, I especially love these ones. Go ahead, Donna, sorry. I definitely felt invisible. I definitely felt invisible back then and like I said there were those who tortured me <laughs> you can laugh now mm -hmm. um, but you know um, I so, felt tormented and invisible so hold on Donna even after the wardrobe malfunction you felt invisible 
Jelly Roll. You're wrong. What more? You know, I'm going to bring that up back. I want to. You're so wrong for that. That I don't forget nothing. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, man. No, I just, yeah. yeah go said ahead. Donna. One thing you said: Meadowbrook instills something in us, even in our life today. We hold our heads up high. Yeah. You know, because after so many years, it has to be our fun. It that that's where our foundation was. When we were going to school as young ladies, as young men. And our, this school put that into us. To hold your head up high. You know, do the right thing. Some people stray, yes. But, you know, you get back on track. You fall off, you get back on track. You know? We were, we were taught to be ladies. And we mm-hmm. were taught to be gentlemen. Even, you know, you asked, you said something. Um there were times when there was a little bit a little bit of rebellion came out of me because you know we had to wear navy blue socks right well let me talk about that Mm -hmm. we all went there (laughs) prefects prefects wore white socks i think we could wear green or blue correct yeah green or blue Mm -hmm. the prefects wore white Right. Mm -hmm. Of course, I tried to wear white socks. Find a reason to sneak and wear white socks. Those were the and and what's crazy? Those were the rebellious things that we did, compared to when I again when I come came here, and I saw the things that the, the level of rebellion. My thing was wearing white socks when I was supposed to be wearing blue or green. But, you know, those are the little things that I did. I said that try to be rebellious. Try as, because I felt and thought I felt invisible. So I would try to do little things and sneaky little things. Um, yeah. Something well, coming see, back to me slowly. You weren't invisible because uh, Mr. Thorpe know your name. So you weren't invisible. Yeah, John <laughs> Collins. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was like, this man knew my name. You thought you he were invisible, but you weren't. Name. He mm-hmm. knew everybody's name. Yeah. I, I, you mentioned something that Donna and Maureen are talking about holding it up high, and all I can think about is how oh, Miss McClellan used to walk. If you remember, mm-hmm. she walked with a stately look, her mm-hmm. back straight, and her head is like. <laughs> So, Ma- yes, 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 yes. When, when and, you know, know, uh, in certain uh, things that you did, you know, repeat that, like, I, repeat that, Maureen. Sorry, so I said, we, we as young ladies, you know, when we're going to Meadow Rock, we emulate her in certain things that she did when she walked, how she walked, and she just walked with distinction. She just, you know. Compared to Mr. Thorpe, you know, he's a man. So, you know, he walked with that authority. He had that, you know, that way of walking and how he walked, you know. But she just had that ladyness about her and she walked. She didn't wiggle her hips, but she just walked and held herself nicely, mm-hmm. you know. So it was, and... it, it, we, we, we didn't want to say then, but we all knew what we, we were seeing, you know. And we all try to to do that. It's not the wiggly walk and walk and wiggle yourself. And, you know, we just walk and held our head up and walk properly. Yeah. I had um, a young li- a, a girl at my job say to me one time, she said, was it my job or at school? She said, do you ever see the ground? <laughs> I was like, and I'm, what? Because I, for a long time, because the blessings of the Lord made me so rich, I used to walk hunched over and keep my books in front of me, cover myself up because I was so conscious. 
my nickname was Mount Everbreast and Madame Labreast. <laughs> Don't I so no, you meant a nickname. I think, I think maybe I remember you know you know. You meant a nickname, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Jelly. Let me let, I can't, let me confess, Donna. Let you me... know, by the time by the time I leave here, leave this call, I'ma be leaving the Holy Ghost on the line to deal with him. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so it wasn't, but. I remember being told to straighten up, sit up, you know, walk, walk straight, stop hunching. So it, it, it stuck with me after and, you know, coming here, being so self-conscious, I ended up taking part in, in beauty pageants going on to model at one point at several, one point of my life and all that because of the way I carried myself you know so there were things that now that we're talking there are things that are coming back to me that you know those were things that we were you know we were taught to sit upright to carry yourself dress appropriately you know mm. we tried to sneak and you know open the collar a little bit, wear the socks when we're not supposed to, you know, we tried to sneak away, but those things, the, the, the moral standards that we were taught have stuck with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of all the things for me, memories for me to resurrect, it was that one. Huh? Was what done? I repeat that. The nickname. I said, of "Oh, all the, the nickname." Okay. Things for me to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let me ask you something. Okay, you left Meadowbrook in the middle, like in a. You were probably in third or fourth form. It sound like. What third was... form. Third form. Just what... before <clears throat> third form ended. I you mentioned it a little bit. What was it? <clears throat> The culture shock like in terms of going to school in the states as opposed to going to school in a Jamaica or Middlebrook per se. I I alluded to it a little bit. Um, for example, one of the biggest things was um, we wore uniform. We we made sure that we took pride in starching our uniform and and making sure that the pleats fell the right way um, or white blouse were you know were put out in the sun to be stark white not yellowed <laughs> you know we took pride in our in our uniform and even those times when we had inspection one of the biggest culture shock here was that we didn't wear uniform. Um, girls came dressed anyway. Um, you wouldn't, you would, if you had a boyfriend, you would sneak and, you know, see each other. You dared not even hold hands out in public where you could be seen. You know, there were the couples who we knew that they were couples, so, you know, you don't touch that. But the making out in the hallways here versus, you know, the way that we we would um, be respectful. Pardon my background music. There's a train track near me. Um, you know, um, even when you had a boyfriend or you were a couple, you conducted yourself with a level of respect fact you know um but here it was different the rowdiness in the classroom i mean i was appalled <laughs> um the disrespect to the teachers that's just it's it was you know 
and then um my one of the other big culture shock was i was um harassed i i don't i probably can i go there no let's not go there dana let's <laughs> leave <laughs> yeah let's let, leave, all leave that, that alone <laughs> yes <laughs> that's too sensitive for you yeah <laughs> yes because yeah. it told me Maureen, i don't want to go there so at all that I would, have oh. to, I, I don't want to edit that. I would have to edit that out. So let's not go there, Donna. I I've avoided yeah, those discussions because out of respect, I get it. Yeah, yeah. I just to I just want to keep it too friendly. Sensitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Cause you invariably going to offend somebody when you say that is, you know. Yeah. And, and I don't want that at all. I, I mean, people have them tries on them tears. I just say, let me leave that alone. <laughs> we can talk about it, Donna. After we finish. As I said, Donna, some yeah. conversation is for behind the paid wall. Yes, not all can be said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> some conversation is for behind the paid wall, Donna. Um, so, Donna, well, what yeah, the best. Those were some of the things. Yeah, go ahead. I said, yeah, those were some of the big um, culture shocks. Different, and, okay. And again, the, I think I shared this with you that when I I had to go to the laundromat and push a laundromat a laundry basket to the laundromat <laughs> oh my mm. god in the snow mm. go to, go to shopping at the supermarket with a shopping cart and you know those were shocks to me because I grew up we had we had a machine at home we would wash our uniforms and hang it out on the line if we needed to but to have to I mean I was shocked I was like have to do what (laughs) wash my own clothes the only thing I was responsible for was washing my own uniform I didn't have to worry about anything else because my mom said you know that would that was her giving us responsibility, taking care of our uniform, making sure that it, you know, the, the blouse blouse was crisp white, the uniform. And I loved pressing my. I got to the point where I loved pressing my uniform and making sure that the pleats fell just right, and you know the the that my collar was starched white, mm-hmm. you know, and and crisp. So, but here, you know, I still took pride in, in the way that I dressed here. But again, I was appalled at the way that some of the girls dressed. You know, mm-hmm. and teachers couldn't say anything to them. You cussing out a teacher and, oh, yeah. So you had the original uniform, Donna. Because I changed the uniform after a while. I hated the new uniform. Fit, fit. More. The thick, the oh, garbage or whatever you call it. Yeah, the thick, the thick, the heavy, the heavy, the same flat but heavier Carp- fabric. I call it carpet cloth, Donna. Carpet. <laughs> That's a good name for it. Yes, I remember. Yeah, I, I, I much prefer the the lighter. The, the lighter material, the, the cotton. Mm-hmm. The original one, Donna and Maureen, because I could have looked straight through those. Those are nice. <laughs> You see why he loves like those Donna? Can't believe he you. had a motive. <laughs> Ulterior motive. <laughs> and that's probably <laughs> why they changed it. <laughs> probably that's yeah, maybe that's why they changed it, of course, of course. So the other not... one thick and hot. You know, yes, that one not wear no slip with that one at all. Not name slip. Okay, so what the girls are wearing underwear. Do it hot. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Even talk about slip. We wore slip with our uniform, but here you could see everything. I mean, at school here, oh, yeah, yeah, short. yeah. Short. Back the right shorts, short. the, 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 mm-hmm. the, the um, Daisy Dukes, mm-hmm. and the Batty Rider. What they call them, mm-hmm. a Pum Pum Rider. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is that different? Is that different standard completely, here, man? Is that different thing completely? Different thing. I I I I I was happy. I went to school in Jamaica for most of my life. 
Yeah. That's that's how I see it. And even when I came around my kids them came here when they're young, it's like I still wonder if that was the right thing, you know, but I just that's how the life turns it's sometimes. Purpose. Yeah. The one thing I learned is that if there's if we see the purpose in everything, it takes away the thing. You mm -hmm. know, it's not what happens to you, but that it happened for you. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there's something I I can look back now and say, what happened for me when I went to Meadowbrook is what um, has helped to mold me for who I am now oh, yeah. and you know mm -hmm. when I can dig when I can um, dig for those memories and those experiences I can find out why it happened for me instead of it happening to me because yeah I was miserable for the first year and a half yeah and nobody did it to me but me yeah did that to yourself yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. I have been enjoying that year. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me ask you another question, Donna. What's the best learning experience you got from going to Middle Rock? Definitely Spanish. I, um, I, I can't, no, I shouldn't just say Spanish because I love. I loved Spanish. I loved the experience of the language. And one of the things I was told is that I had a natural tongue for the language. Um, you know, there's some Spanish words you would say like, um, hola, like some people say that, I've said, hola, que tal, nada de nuevo. You know, I had the, I learned to have, I was excited to know that I had the tongue for it. Um, so you make it roll. It rolled off my tongue. Whereas, you know, the, you know how the Jamaican accent, we would pronounce the, 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 the language, the Spanish with the Jamaican accent, where it doesn't sound natural. Um, and the other thing was my love for geography. Um, I was curious about, the, I became curious about the world. And now as a travel, um, owning my own travel business, I can understand why. You know, I was curious about the world, curious to learn about the, the, the different places across the globe. And I, I just, and, and I understand now why. Um, and then, there was a part I didn't get into drama as much, but my my interest in drama was um, was kindled during those those short three years. The inter my interest for the arts, art, and um, and I followed through with with the arts when I came here. I my my first major in college was fashion designing because of that i learned why i you, just putting everything together the language the arts the creativity and the love to travel because if you learn about anything in fashion it's putting all the different things like little things from around the world together it it, it it's it, I, I'm getting excited just talking about it, but I hope that does that make sense? Yeah, man, it does. It does. It does, Donna. It it's does. and it and all of that is is a part of me, and that was where it was um, it was nurtured. I admit I broke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and Donna, you said. In oh, in total, how many are you guys? Um, you had one brother and two sisters. They said, "Was it four of you guys?" No, I well, two brothers and one sister. But one, um, my baby brother, my my youngest yeah. brother was a year when we came to the United States. So my older sister Jennifer, she's a year year and six months older than me. She went to St. Hugh's. My 
brother, Osmond, went to Calabar, and he's a year younger than I am. He's a year behind me. Oh, and, and then, then a younger baby, baby brother. brother. Yeah, then there's a baby who came when I was 13. <laughs> okay, I got you, I got you. Oh, yeah. That meant an, another female, but it was your cousin who went to Queens. Yes, that's what I'm thinking about. It. Yeah. Yeah, understood. Understood. So it's two boys and two girls. I hear you. Just like, just like myself, yeah. I'm the youngest of four. I have one brother and two sisters. So, yeah. Um, so, huh? Repeat that, Maureen. No, no, no. You're done. I repeat that. No, no, I said my daughter. Okay, okay. So, uh -huh. Yes, I have another question for you, um, Donna. Um, what life lesson you learn at Meadowbrook, you pass on to your friends and family? Life lesson. I, I put it this way. Um, it was it was long in coming, but it's not what anyone says or thinks about you that matters, but what you what God says and thinks about you and what you think about yourself based on what God says. Mm -hmm. Do I need to say that again? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, say it again, Donna. Should I say it again? Yeah, say it again. It's not what it's not what other people say or think about you that matters. What truly matters is what God says and thinks about you and what you think about yourself based on what God based on God's opinion of you. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And and the reason for that is because, as I said, I was tormented, and it worked on my self esteem, damaged my self esteem. But I came to I I don't remember who said it to me. It probably was Miss Barber, because I felt like. She, she was one of the gentle ones. Mm -hmm. But um, like I said, I was, I was tormented and it really worked on me, made me really subconscious. And I tried to be accepted and got in, in, in detention because of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to be part of the in crowd. Part of the ink crowd wanted to be accepted. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah. I have a couple more questions here, Dana. I believe it or not, we have been here for over two hours already. So, you, I know you're not going to believe that. Can you say? But I do have nothing to say. <laughs> I sure did, did. I sure did think that. I said that. Yeah, yeah. But I have to say that. Yeah, go ahead, Maureen. No, I was saying Donna had a lot to say. Yeah, yeah, of Who course, else? of course. A lot of people come on this and think say them not not to say, but trust me, as I say, once you come on, the memories come back, man. Mm -hmm. The memories them get triggered certain way, Donna. That is that that is why I love them them conversation. Yeah. Cause when mention your nickname, it's like I can't visualize. I say, ah, did I you see a man? You say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I grew into them. <laughs> wow. Yeah, all right. Let, let me ask you a couple more questions before we wrap it up. Okay. Yeah, um, so, yeah, what message did I give to existing student or future student who are going to hear this conversation, Donna? Meadowbrook student, mm -hmm. our teachers, our, what message did I give to them? They're going to hear your talk and I say, what message do you have for them? Who are come Meadowbrook, who don't come Meadowbrook yet? Um... Being one who felt invisible and shy and insecure and the, the, the things that are the, the, the lessons 
that are most valuable are not necessarily the academic but mm -hmm. not not downplaying the value of the academic but the most important things are the moral standards that are emulated before you because um there's a saying gifts um let me see if i could remember it exactly um Gifts and talents can take you places where only your character can sustain you. So the, the examples that are emulated before you are those standards that help to build your character. So take note of those. Hold on to those because your gifts and talents that you, that are natural part of you, they will be nurtured in the subjects that are given to you. And you may, and, and appreciate the value of them because a lot of times we could be smart and we think that we're so smart that we are educated fools. Mm -hmm. But the character that is emulated before you glean from those as well because they are your the teachers and the leaders are your mentors and coaches that later on in your life a lot of people go searching for them but they're they are already there giving you their time and wisdom take those and value them for what they were I wasted almost two years of my life being upset because I didn't choose Meadowbrook and I lost, like I said, I lost, I missed out on some things that in the last year I was trying to grab a hold of it and take note of everything, what, you know, to, to hold on to those memories, but the time I was able to, you know, grasp it. But again, I say gifts and callings can take you, gifts and talent can take you places where only your character will sustain you. And sustain you. Mm -hmm. And the, I'm sorry? I didn't hear what you no, said. No, go ahead, Nana. No, go ahead. So the, the, the teachers are emulating those characteristics that you want to glean from to help you. So when your gifts, the, the, the doors that your gifts and talents open for you, your character then will be able to sustain you there. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's so true, Donna. That is so true. Well, I have just one more thing to ask you before I ask you the, the last question, Donna. Is there anything, any question I could have asked that I didn't ask, or anything that you want to bring up that I didn't bring up at all? The floor is yours. Hmm. Um, I think you, I think you touched on it, but the one of the most important things for me is how we can give back. Um, and as I said, I'm kind of late, late, but not late. It's just you, you, I don't think so. You, the most important thing that you're doing is you're providing the platform. And I think with whether the question is asked or not asked, just what you're doing is priceless. Yeah, thank you for that, Donna. Thanks. I can't think of any questions. I can't think of any questions, mm -hmm. but I just want to say thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you for that. And Maureen, before I ask Donna our last question, you have anything that you think I leave off? What could I ask? And anything that you think I could ask? 
Maureen? No. Yeah, go ahead. I think, I know I was thinking. I think you got it. I think you got it, Jelly. Mm -hmm. You got it. Oh, one question I want to ask Donna. Did you ever, did you play any sports? I didn't play any sport, but somewhere along, I was a cheerleader. That's as much sport. <laughs> <ever>. That's it. <laughs> okay. I think I was too, um, I think I had the potential, but I was just so, I was just so um, tormented <laughs> oh. that okay. I lost my confidence. <laughs> Oh, okay. But I definitely loved um, netball, and I could have done I could have done pretty good at that. There was a period where, when I was in primary school, I I did some track and high jump, but um, lost my confidence when I got to high school. And I loved dancing. I took I I eventually took up dancing when I came here. I started dancing in um in primary school, but again lost my confidence. But I found my voice, if I may put it that, in chorus. And I didn't do any sports. Yeah, that that was a pity you never get a chance to go to that famous concert. That concert, the chorus with, with Fidel though. That was a pity. Didn't that. I... that would have been something you know, I remember for the rest of your life. I was that close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it could be a reason why she wasn't supposed to be there. You never know. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, I think you're you're right. I vaguely remember there was an accident that day. I ve I'm a, I'm gonna have to ask my brother if he remembers. But mm -hmm. I believe that there was an accident. There was an accident that day. Mm -hmm. And we had um we had Girl Scouts. Did we have Girl Scouts? I met a Girl Scouts. We had cadets. We had cadets. I vaguely remember cadets. Uh -huh. Yeah. Maybe Not girls. Or cadets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you had one other question. Yeah, yeah man. Last cadets. question. Last it. question, and then we'll have a, we'll have a closing remark. And everybody get the same last question, Donna. What made Meadowbrook magical? What made Meadowbrook magical? I would say Mr. Thorpe. You know who don't want to hear that? Mm, she not. Huh? Tell her, <laughs> tell her you're Maureen. <laughs> she, are, are, are you a ring up there now when she heard this? We know what I call her name, yes. <laughs> Who was that? That's Margaret. That's Mr. Tab was our first crush. Our first one. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret Lippermore. She was a little younger than you, Donna. But yeah, she was supposed to join us tonight. But tonight is our birthday. So we have a big her up the same way. <laughs> but, but continue, Donna. I would, Sorry. I would definitely say it was Mr. Thorpe because, and, and I'm shocked that that's even what came to me. But again, because of the just, just, just his presence, what his presence exuded, it was like I said, it was a rever reverential fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and who was? Let's see. It was one of the teachers that I had a crush on too, I think. Oh. I can't remember his name. It was my sport something years ago. <laughs> it's a lot <laughs> to remember. <laughs> Jelly tried your car brain. Oh me? Yeah. Oh the teacher them um yeah, in that time? Like... Yeah. Yeah. Now remember, I wouldn't be looking at male teachers in her, so. <laughs> so you don't know. Definitely was not Mr. Dean. I just hated having to be in the school with him because he. <sighs> and not Mr. Bell Nevis. I was just going to say Bell Nevis. 
Oh, uh, Mister, you know who it was? I can't tell you who it was. I went to her who it was. Smith? Mr. Nairn. No, Mr. Nairn is too young. Now, man, he started, I think, when I was in second he form, that's when he started. Young. Repeat that, Dana. Who's one of the younger I teachers? I don't remember his name. Who's one of the younger teachers? We're not the young men, men, male teachers. Mr. Smith, Mr. Nair, Mr. Mr. Bell Navis. Um, even Mr. Magoga was young at that time. I can't remember. And, and then the two... Um... I don't remember. That's right. Tomorrow morning you but remember. I, I Trust me. I think that it sure will. <laughs> Yeah, man, Maybe the next time I come on, I that's all them. That's all them thing I got done. Sometimes when you go later on tonight and tomorrow morning, come and say, "Do you remember? Remember the name of them? Yeah, yep, yep, yep." But when I see the yearbook, I will remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you go through the yearbook, that's true. That's true, Donna. That's true. <laughs> so, any any closing remarks, Donna, before I close out this program here tonight? Well, again, I alluded to it um, that what you're doing here is absolutely invaluable. And I don't think you will even fully see the impact of what it of what it is doing and what it can do. So I want to commend you for your courage, for your vision and for your tenacity of um, sticking to it and keeping it going. So, thank you. No, thank you for those kind words, Donna. Thank you. I appreciate that. As I say, as you hear my mother, I just love talking. I hear the story, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm drawing the tongue for your more stories, so... <laughs> I love having the conversation. So I'm telling her, Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown, Mr. Beckford, Mr. Bellamy. I'm looking at the teachers. Now. Yeah, look on the yearbook. Um, yeah. Not Mr. Beckford. <laughs> he wasn't. Yeah, Mr. Brown, Mr. Bellamy, and Mr. Beckford. And then you had Mr. Owen. Oh, Mr. Mr. Towson was the older. Those are the only six I see, five I see, gentlemen. But most of female teachers, yeah. Yeah, yeah most of female. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, and this one, Mr. Here, Mr. Here. Yeah. Probably and Mr. Dean. Where's Mr. Here? What Mr. Here look like? It was probably Mr. Here. Because he was <laughs> like... um. Like I Tall said, he was the, that hippie type. Hippie. Yeah, they yeah. sound like Miss Ayer. Sound like Miss Ayer. Um, Donna, Miss Ayer mm-hmm. was my coach, my favorite coach, that man. After you left, number one, sound like Miss Ayer was a coach. Miss Ayer was my inspiration, man. Miss Abek for Miss Ayer. It was. Uh-huh. It was because I I remember um, playing field hockey. Yeah. That was another thing I'm just remembering, and then. Um, and then we did I'm soccer at one time. I was like determined to do, to learn. Oh my God, because I wanted his attention so much. Yeah, it was Mr. Here. Yeah, Mr. Here. He I just like a hippie type. Yeah, man, Mr. Here, that. Uh, we used to call him Red Dread. <laughs> <laughs> that was a nickname. Or the Dread. Affectionate. Affectionate. No derogatory thing. It just... Very. Yeah, man, mm-hmm. a good friend. We, we became very good friends, so man. Easy going. He was so easy going and make you feel, made you feel like you could do anything. Yeah, man, yeah. So, yeah, he was that. He was definitely so that. now I'm remembering. I'm, I'm seeing seeing us out on field hockey in our in our um, gym clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm, fair year. So, so you, Maureen, any closing remarks before I close out? I just want to say to you, Jilly, as as um, Donna said, it's amazing. 
I love it. I listen to my podcast. I listen to other podcasts. And I love the feeling that you get. It's like our family is finally coming together. It, it, it's just to hear the stories of other people, you know, what they, you know, the meta book that you are seeing and what they're seeing, putting it all together is just, it's just amazing. And it, it just makes you feel, feel good to be a part of that, put it that way. Yeah. 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 And I said, too, you are not going to see the impact. Probably I'm not even going to see the impact. The younger generation are going to, because they're going to be listening to these things. And they're going to be like, oh, no. you know, so, 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 you know, mm-hmm. the experience that they're getting from what we are saying to what they're knowing about Metabook is going to be. But I love this. I really love it. And I, I thank you for making me a part of this. For you and Donna. <laughs> but Donna... We're gonna we're gonna come together. Yeah, because yep. I I I get to New York maybe twice the minimum twice a year. Um, yeah, man, Maureen, Maureen, we introduce you to the Meadowbrook community. I sent your number. I share each, each other number with you, know, so I know. You know. So. Oh, okay, sounds thank you. Good. Sounds good. Yeah, man, because that that's what it's all about the connections, the connection, and ta- yes. and thanks for those kind words, Maureen. I appreciate that. It's like. Long after we're gone, people are going to hear them conversation and look and listen to them and laugh and say, look how them they have fun. Uh-huh. The conversation uh-huh. them have fun itself are easy. Look at them. Uh-huh. Yeah, I would tell you talk about wardrobe malfunction and, and Margaret and Satab. What that about? Yes. Who's this man? You know? You're not going to make me forget that, are you? <laughs> Anyway, ladies, let me close out the program before I get in that trouble. Donna, spell with one N. Donna Collins, Maureen yeah. Spence Yearwood. I thank you for coming tonight and spend over two hours at Tabo Meadowbrook Memories. And this was great, as I said, Donna. Because you're not forgotten. Nobody who got Meadowbrook who spent a couple of days at Meadowbrook will ever be forgotten. They can't come tell them story. Once them women come tell them to wear up them out. And I would draw them tongue and make sure them tell them. I have enough story to tell, no worry. So <laughs> I love it. And I'm, I'm glad God bless God bless both as a man, but God bless all the way and God bless that great school of Meadowbrook. Two Meadowbrook government put us together and bring us together. That we can have them wonderful conversation of forty years after the fact. Forty years after the fact. And if yep, you yep. feel, feel like we're still there at school. Feel I'm like we're still there at school. So I appreciate it. Thank you. And God bless you. And have a good night. I appreciate this conversation. Yeah. All right, Jelly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Donna? Yes. yes. Don't lose oh, my number. No, you can call me. I'm looking for it now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good night. Right. Good night. Okay. Yeah, man. All right. Good night. All right. Good night. Good night. So, remember to like, share, and subscribe these Meadowbrook Memories podcasts so neither you nor your friends will miss another memorable conversation. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Meadowbrook Memories. And remember to give us all the support and encouragement you can on whatever social media platform you are listening. And special thanks to my production manager, Kyle Prince, who takes care of everything involved in getting the podcast out every week. And without him, this podcast would not be possible. It is his expertise that allows me to do what I love doing every week, having great conversations about Meadowbrook memories, and he responds by everything else. So again, thanks to my production manager, Kyle Prince.